Hi, welcome back to NPA teaching. See, for every linear programming problem, there is a corresponding problem known as dual problem. The given original problem, whether it is maximization or minimization, is called primal problem. That is, if the original problem is maximization, then its dual is minimization. And if the original problem is minimization, then its dual is maximization. Thus, optimal value of primal objective function is equal to the, the optimal value of corresponding dual objective function. Sometime dual problem solution may be easier than primal problem solution. The solution of dual problem leads to the solution of primal problem and thus efficient computational techniques can be developed through the concept of duality. See, we will explain the various steps to formulate the dual problem along with suitable example. The first steps towards the mathematical formulation of the dual problem explain that See, if the objective function in the primal problem is to be maximized, then its dual is to be minimized. And at the same time, if the objective function in the primal problem is to be minimized, then its dual is to be maximized. Consider one example. See here, the original problem that is known as primal problem, here is maximization of profit, that is maximization of z which is equal to 3x1 plus 8x2. So here we have two decision variable x1 and x2 and our objective function is maximization of the value of that and which is subjected to the two constraints that is x1 plus 2x2 less than or equal to 2 and the second constraint is 2x1 plus 8x2 less than or equal to 6. And at the same time we are assuming that the value of x1 and x2 are greater than or equal to 0. Now we are going to convert the primal problem into dual. So as per our, our first step that is our objective function here is maximization. Then of course in its dual we want to minimize. We want to minimize the objective function. So here the objective function is maximization of profit. So the dual will become minimization of cost. The second step is that the column vector of constant from the primal constraint is transposed to a row vector of the coefficients for the objective function in the dual. See in our example, the column vector of the constant from the primal constraint that is here it is 2 and 6 which are transposed to the row vector of coefficient for the objective function. So as per our dual, the minimization of cost is equal to 2y1 plus 6y2. So here 2 and 6 are the, the column vector of constant from the primal constraint. Now it will become the row vector of the coefficient, coefficient for the objective function in the dual. So here minimize c is equal to 2y1 plus 6y2. So here x1 and x2 will be changed to y1 and y2. The third step is that the inequality signs of technical constraints are reversed. At the same time, the non-negativity constraints on the decision variables are always maintained. So as per our example, the inequality signs of the technical constraints in the given primal problems are less than or equal to. So that will be changed to greater than or equals in the dual problem. So the dual problem subjected to the constraint which are greater than or equal to. And at the same time see here the non-negativity constraints on the decision variable that is as like x1 and x2 are greater than or equal to 0. In the same way the variables y1 and y2 are also greater than or equal to 0. That means the non-negativity constraints on the decision variables are always maintained. The next step is that the rows of coefficient matrix of the constraints in the primal problems are transposed to the columns for the coefficient matrix of constraints in the dual problem. In our example, 
the first row of coefficient of matrix of given constraint that means coefficient of first constraints are 1 and 2 that will be transposed to the column for the coefficient matrix so 1 and 2 will be column coefficient for the matrix constraints in the dual problem at the same time the second row of the coefficient matrix that is 2 and 8 now will be transposed to the column for the coefficient matrix of constraints in the dual problem the last steps towards the formulation of dual problem is that the row vector of the coefficients in the objective function in the given primal problem is transposed to the column vector of the constants for the dual constraint. So here in the primal problem the row vector coefficients in the objective function that are 3 and 8 now will be transposed to the column vector of constant for the dual problem that is here greater than or equal to 3 and greater than or equal to 8. So these are the various steps towards the formulation of dual problem. So here our dual problem is minimization of cost which is equal to 2y1 plus 6y2 subjected to the constraints that are y1 plus 2y2 greater than or equal to 3 to y1 plus 8 y2 greater than or equal to 8 and at the same time uh, y1 and y2 these are the two decision variables in the case of dual problem which are greater than or equal to 0. Now we are going to consider another example with three decision variables given in the primal problem. So as we are already explained the first steps towards the uh, transformation of primal into the dual is the objective function, if the objective function in the primal is to be maximized, then its dual is to be minimized. And at the same time, if the objective function in the primal problem is maximize, minimized, then its dual is to be maximized. Consider the example with three decision variables. That is the primal problem that is minimization, cost minimization, which is equal to 20x1 plus 30x2 plus 16x3. So here x1, x2 and x3 are the three decisions variable. So the objective function here is to be minimization of cost. Subjected to the constraint here are 2.5x1 plus 3x2 plus x3 greater than or equal to 3. And the second constraint is x1 plus 3x2 plus 2x3 greater than or equal to 4. At the same time, we are also assuming x1, x2 and x3 are greater than or equal to 0. Now, in our primal problem, the objective function is minimization. Therefore, in, in our dual, the objective function is maximization of profit. The second step is the column vector of constant from the primal constraint is transposed to a row vector of coefficient for the objective function in the dual. In our given example, the column vector of constant from the primal constraints are 3 and 4, which now are transposed to a row vector of the coefficient for the objective function in the dual. So, therefore, the objective function in the dual will become maximization of z, which is equal to 3y1 plus 4y2. Here we have only two decisions variable but in the primal problem we have three decision variable because the number of constraints in the primal problem we have only two therefore the number of variables in the dual problem will be equal to the number of constraints in the primal problem so here we have only two variables that is y1 and y2 the third step is the inequality signs of the technical constraints are reversed and at the same time, the non-negativity constraints on the decisions variables are always maintained. So in our example, the inequality signs of the technical constraints in the given primal problem which are greater than or equal to. So in the dual problem that can be changed to less than or equal to. So here we have three less than or equal to sign. Because we have three variable decision variables in the primal problem. So in the dual problem, we have three constraints. As given in the primal problem, the decision variables are greater than or equal to zero. See in the primal problem, the x value of x1, x2, x3 are greater than or equal to zero. In the similar way, the variables in the dual problem that are y1 and y2 are also greater than or equal to zero. 
the fourth step is the row of the coefficient matrix of constraints in the primal are transposed to the column for the coefficient matrix of the constraints in the dual see here the first row of the coefficient matrix of the constraint that are 2.5 x1 plus 3 x2 plus 1 x3 now that will be transposed to the column for the coefficient matrix of the constraint in the dual so it is 2.5 y1 3 y1 and 1 y1 and at the same time from the second constraint that is 1 x1 plus 3 x2 plus 2 x3 that will now be transposed to the column for the coefficient matrix of the constraint in the dual that is y2 3 y2 2 y2 so this is the fourth step that is row of coefficient matrix of the constraints are in the pri given primal problem are transposed to the column for the coefficient matrix of the constraint in the dual problem the last step is the row vector of coefficient in the objective function in the given primal problem is transposed to the column vector of constant for the dual constraint so in the given example the row vector of coefficient in the objective function in the given primal problem here are 20 30 and 16 that will be transposed to the column vector of the constant for the dual constraint that is here in the dual it is less than or equal to 20 less than or equal to 30 and less than or equal to 16 so these are the various procedures or steps towards the mathematical formulation of dual problem from given primal problem see here in the given primal problem we have three variables that is x1 x2 x3 we can't solve this uh, linear programming problem by using graphical method and this at the same time now we are converted this primal problem into the dual we have only two variables here that is y1 and y2 therefore we can solve this given dual problem by using the graphical method easily so one of the advantage to solve the dual of the given primal problem that has less number of constraints because the number of constraints usually equal to the number of iterations required to solve the problem i hope you understood how to convert the primal linear programming problem or original linear programming problem into its dual have a nice day and see you in the next video thank you